Hello friends, Erin from the Wine Sisters here and today we are talking spring inspired wine and cheese. Hello wine lovers, thanks for joining me for another segment here on the Wine Sisters YouTube channel where we teach you how to eat, drink and entertain like a pro. So today we are talking about everybody's favorite subject and that would be wine and cheese. Now, if you wanna see a great way to put together a stunning Instagram worthy cheese board, just go to this video where I teamed up with one of my very favorite chefs where we paired wine and cheese for all purposes, for all seasons. Ah, it is spring. Spring is in the air and we have all been waiting for it for so long. This year, perhaps more than others. But I love putting together themes. If you've been to any of the Wine Sisters events in the past, you know that our parties always center around some kind of theme. And I think it's really fun to put together themes for cheese boards as well. So today I'm talking about spring inspired and what does that actually mean? How do you actually talk about a spring inspired cheese board? Well, as an example, working backwards, when we talk about uh, cheese boards for the fall, I like to have a lot of fun with really orange cheeses, things like Beamsters and Mimolettes and even certain aged cheddars, so you get those fall-like orange colors. Today, because we're now entering the printemps, we are now looking at cheeses that are a little bit lighter, a little bit brighter, just like the spring itself. So on my cheese board here, I have three, but certainly not the end all and be all. You can certainly go to town. Burrata's would be lovely and fresh mozzarella's, which burrata is, would be lovely. But I've mixed it up a little bit with everybody's favorite, uh, Delice de Bourgogne. This is a triple cream cheese that just melts like butter. We also have, uh, this is something that's local to Ontario. It's called Wildwood. It's basically similar to, I guess you would say an Appenzeller or a Gruyere, uh, a nuttier, creamier kind of cheese. But this one's really nice because it has a washed rind, a natural rind, and it's been washed in uh, spent uh, red wine yeast. And having it get that wash means that it has this really beautiful uh, color and it gives it a really uh, interesting texture as well as flavor. So that's kind of fun. And then finally, uh, I've also added on, in place of a blue, which I normally do, but I find that blue can be somewhat controversial for many palettes. Not mine. I will eat it any time. Thank you very much. But I opted for, uh, I guess, an equally controversial, it turns out, but a truffle cheese. This is a sheep's milk cheese from Spain uh, that's been laced with black truffle. So think of it like a manchego of sorts that's been laced with black, black truffle, if you're familiar with manchego. What I like about this cheese board, and I, I chose to make this one unadorned. Again, if you go to that other video, you'll see all the nuts and fruits and spreads that we often will fill up a cheese board with to make it really pretty, but I wanted to keep this one kind of burgundian in style, just the cheese itself, so we could get right to the heart of the matter, talking about wine and cheeses. And with these cheeses, you certainly can have a totally like nerdy wine geek party, and please invite me, where you're trying a specific cheese with a specific wine but honestly most of us including me when you're just having a get together or having a cocktail hour you're not going to be geeking out that much well if at all really so I thought I'd bring along some umbrella wines some wines that will really maximize the success of your cheese board and again keeping with that bright fresh and crisp spring theme so let's start here I actually ended up getting I'm coming to you from Toronto Canada and I didn't mean to do this but it just sort of happened naturally and it's kind of cool I have a wine from each of our major wine producing provinces BC Ontario and Nova Scotia so let's start with the, your get out of jail free card okay this is a Brut Reserve this is a traditional method and traditional method is a wine that is done in as a sparkling wine that's made in the same style as champagne in fact you can learn more about that by going to this video but don't do that yet stick with me so this is a beautiful winery called Bloemenden and it's uh, from Nova Scotia in the Annapolis Valley very close to the Atlantic Ocean and that's what gives Nova Scotia such a beautiful climate for producing really great crisp clean, very complex and interesting sparkling wines. This one is 100% Chardonnay. It's hand harvested. It's been uh, resting on its leaves. It's been aged for five years. And this is going to give you a really beautiful uh, 
texture on your palette, creaminess, a finesse, and it's going to mix in some of those toasty brioche notes with that lemon and that apple. And so this will go brilliantly with pretty much any cheese, pretty much anything on the planet. But for me, I pair this with a like one of these nuttier kind of style. Like I said, this is the Wildwood. If you can't find this in your area, you can go for a Gruyere or an Appenzeller, something kind of nutty. This is absolutely beautiful with that particular wine and it keeps with that kind of celebratory theme. As well, if you wanted to do something like our Delice de Bourgogne, so this is like, like I said, it's a triple creme, melts like butter, it's everyone's favorite. So I often, here's a little side trick for you. I often will buy two or even three wedges because this is the one that seems to go the most and I'll swap them out of a clean uh, onto a new cheese board because, you know, as cheese boards get picked over and they start to look a little yucky and maybe not quite as lovely as they were before. Swapping out your cheeses to keep things fresh is a really nice thing to do. But Delice de Bourgogne, obviously it comes from Bourgogne, Burgundy. Uh, I've got a Chardonnay here from Ontario. This is Cloudsley Cellars. It's coming from the 20 mile bench. This is the Niagara Scarpment area. And Cloudsley, what they do is they have a very Burgundian drive at this winery. So the use of oak is very judicious. Uh, there's a lot of finesse and leanness to this wine. Uh, there's a real mineral from the soils that it's grown in, as opposed to those Chardonnays, which are equally lovely, but far richer in terms of their oak treatment, in terms of their uh, poached fruit, nutty, buttery components. This wine really keeps its mineral drive with a lot of that orchard fruit. And it's a beautiful pairing for your Delice de Bourgogne. I think it's absolutely fantastic. But again, it has that flexibility to go with these other wines on this board. And rounding out our trio of Canadian wines, we have something from Grey Monk. Grey Monk is in BC, it's in the Kelowna area. Kelowna is at the top of the Okanagan Valley and Grey Monk is a very Germanically styled winery. Uh, they do a lot of things like Oxeraw, which you don't see uh, really in very many places in Canada at all, if in the world. Oxeraw is a grape that's uh, known for, uh, in Alsace, in Germany, in Luxembourg, but not overly popular, but still interesting if you can find some nice examples. But they'll do the Rieslings and they'll do like what we have here, the Pinot Gris. Now this Pinot Gris is a little bit more of a fleshier style, even though it's been aged in stainless steel, crisper, more focused, more driven flavor profile. There's a lot of peachy notes here. There's a lot of florality here. There's a wider, um, I guess, I don't want to say oily uh, mouth uh, texture to this wine, but there's there's a silkier texture to this wine. And it's, it's uh, very Alsatian in its style, even though there's a crispness here. But because it has those fruity floral characteristics, think of it almost like how you would use um, a spread on your cheese board, like a jelly or a compote or a jam on your cheese board. So think about when you have your Delice de Bourgogne, you might put a little bit of an apricot jelly with it. Or if you have your uh, wild wood, like I said, similar to Gruyere and it's nutty, maybe you might put like some honey with your cheese board. Not suggest that this wine is sweet in any way, but think about this wine works really nicely. That fruit offsets that saltiness of the cheese for a really dynamic pairing. But we're talking about spring, of course. And again, we've got crisp, bright white wines going with your lighter styled of your cheese boards. Now, for those of you who are dying for a red wine, and I can't say I blame you because, well, I love all wines, to be quite honest. I like Pinot Noirs for these styles of cheeses. Uh, you could also go with a Gamay. You could go with some lighter styled Merlots. You could go with um, something called Frappato, which we'll be talking about in a few weeks, which comes from the Mount Etna region. A lighter style red is going to have a little bit more food flexibility, especially when it comes to these lighter styled cheeses. Now, again, remember we talked about how this cheese has a red wine lees wash on it. So there are going to be some of those characteristics coming through, however faint that might be. I have a really lovely Chilean Pinot Noir that's grown higher up in the uh, altitude and there's all these red fruits coming forward along with some herbal elements and uh, a definite kind of foresty, earthy kind of element here. And that's going to be quite juicy on the palate and work really nice because the tannins are lower. You're not going to be competing too much with these cheeses. And with the truffle, it's going to be quite lovely as well. And finally, to round this out, another idea for your spring cheese board for your spring party, backyard party theme. I've got a lovely Chenin Blanc here. This is a beautiful wine out of South Africa. South Africa, you can get some great steals of wines and Chenin Blanc is one of their grapes that they produce a lot of. You can also find some great Chenin Blanc in Loire. But you can see here, I poured myself a glass already because don't my 
Chateau de Vaudou. On this wine, it's got these beautiful um, golden kind of colors. Even though there's a crispness to this wine, and um, I have a couple of bottles of this in my cellar because it's brilliant for entertaining. It's under $15. I think it's 14 bucks in the Ontario market. But you can see here with this wine, we've got this really pretty golden hue that comes through. And the nose is a balance between um, stone fruits, but there's a really interesting hay-like or almost kind of greenness that's happening. And a tiny, tiny faintness of uh, like a honeysuckle or a buckwheat honey that's coming through for me. And the palette is quite bright and it's, let's just try it. You get that mouth-watering perk up right away along the sides of your tongue, the insides of your cheeks. That's that elevated acid of the wine that's really snapping your attention to the forefront. And this is gonna go brilliantly with pretty much all the cheeses on here as well. Why? Because we've got that acidic, oh my, look how acidic that is. I've got all kinds of like salivation happening. How sexy am I right now? But what will happen is that mouth-watering acidity, it cleanses your palate of all that dairy richness and gets you ready for the next bite. But what happens is the dairy richness then work with the cheese to round it out. The salt of the cheese promotes the, the fruit flavor and the dairy component, the fattiness of the cheese, helps take those angular, beautiful, uh, crisp edges and smooths them out a little bit so that the wine becomes even a little bit more plush on your palate a really nice pairing, which is perfect as well for those spring events that you're going to be hosting, spring wine and cheeses. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm gonna have so many more wine and cheese experiences as this YouTube channel continues because we can go on forever and ever and ever, but I'll stop right there. Hopefully you got a lot out of this. Let me know what your favorite wine and cheese pairing is in the comments below. I'd love to know what I need to try next. My name is Erin Henderson. I'm from the Wine Sisters and I appreciate your time. So please, if you like this video, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, send it on to your friends to watch and please subscribe and hit that bell. So that means that you, every time we release a video, which is every Wednesday, you'll be sure to get alerted and you won't miss a thing. Thanks so much everybody. Until I see you next time, stay well drink better.